Good morning, grade 10 students. In this video, we're going to talk about the hormonal communication. This session is going to be the revision for semester uh, two for the week 20 and 21. So this is the revision. So we talked that we have two different types of communication inside the body. We have a nervous communication and we have the hormonal communication. We said that the hormonal communication is slow compared to the nervous, which is very fast. And we said that we have different uh, characteristics about the hormonal communication and the nervous communication. These differences they are summarized in this table where the nervous communication occurs through her nervous message, whereas the endocrine through a hormonal message through the secretion of hormones, as we see the last week. So it's a rapid response while it's a slow response for the endocrine compared to the nervous. Then the message is an electrochemical one. It depends on the uh, concentration of the ions and the electric impulses and so on. Whereas the uh, endocrine communication is going to be a chemical one. Nervous message is transmitted from one urine to another urine or from one urine to an affected organ or to a gland, for example. While hormones, they are transported to blood from one gland toward their target organ. A factor organ is connected to the nervous system by nerves, while the target organs, they are not connected to the endocrine glands. So first of all, we talk about glands. What is a gland? So a gland is an organ that produces or synthesizes the, the certain chemical substances. These chemical substances we are going to look about in the coming slides. These chemical substances, they have special target organ. They move toward a specific organ in order to work. So we have three different types of glands. We have an endocrine gland. And they are glands that secrete hormone directly into. That's why they're called endo, directly into the blood. Like the thyroid gland, they secrete thyroxin into the blood. And we have pancreas, secretes pancreatic juice. No, secretes insulin, which is the hormone in the blood. While the other type of gland is called the exocrine gland. Exocrine gland, they are glands that secrete substances through special ducts. Example about this, the pancreas secretes pancreatic juice and the small intestine. And we have the salivary glands that secrete saliva in the mouth. It's the level of the mouth, which is the large organ. So here, there are three types of glands. The third type is going to be the mixed gland. As you realize, the pancreas is going to be mixed between the endo and the exo, between the endocrine gland by secreting the insulin and between the exocrine gland by secreting the pancreatic juice. So it's a type of the mixed gland. So what is a target organ? The target organ is a specific organ on which the hormones can act. The target organ, it has cells. These cells, they possess certain receptors for certain hormones, the binding of this hormone to the receptor, in Monsharad Nayala hormone, whenever it binds to the receptor like this case, so the hormones, they bind to their receptors. So the binding of the hormone to its receptor induces a change at the level of the target organ. So we have a change, either structural or functional, at the level of the target organ. So these are the uh, target, the definition of the target organ. So the target organ, as I said, is a specific organ in which the hormone can act. It has cells which possess certain receptors. The binding of the hormone to the receptor will cause a change in the, in the target organ. So steps of the hormonal communication. We have five different steps. And one of you is going to ask me, can we summarize them into three steps, for example? Yes, you can. If you ask me, Mr. Uh, give the steps of the hormonal communication. Can I write them as a paragraph? Yes, you can. If I told you list the steps of hormonal communication, you are forced. You are forced to draw, to write them as steps as one, two, three, four, or as A, B, C, D. So if I said list, so you have to respect this list, meaning that you have to mention them as steps as points. So you are not allowed to mention them as for example, a paragraph, to write them as a paragraph, since I said list. So listing, it should be as listing A, B, C, E, D, I, I one, two, three, four, one in Roman, two in Roman, three in Roman, and so on, as you want. You have to list them. 
So without listing, you will not get the full mark. So it's that list. So list, you have to write them as steps. So the steps of the hormonal communication, first of all, we have the secretion of the hormone by an endocrine gland into the blood. This hormone will circulate into the blood vessels. Then this hormone will pass it through the blood toward the target organ. Whenever it binds to the receptor organ or to the receptor on the surface of the target organ, this will form what's known by the hormone receptor complex. So I repeat, first step, it's easy, secretion of the hormone into the blood. Then the hormone will circulate into the blood. Then it will pass from the blood towards its target organ. Whenever it binds to the receptors on the target organ, this will lead to the formation of a complex. What do we call this complex? It's called hormone receptor complex. Whenever they bind the hormone with the receptor on the target organ, this formation of the hormone receptor complex will induce a response in the target cell. And this is the final step of the hormonal communication. So moving now to the name of the gland. These glands, you have to study them. They are not mentioned in the question. So you have to know them. You have to know that the pituitary gland is located at the brain of the brain, at the base of the brain below the hypothalamus. This gland, it's the pituitary gland, it secretes two hormones. It secretes the hormone TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, or the HGH, the human growth hormone. From its name, thyroid stimulating hormone. So what is the function of this gland? Thyroid stimulating hormone. It stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete the hormone thyroxine. And the target organ is going to be the thyroid gland. Since it works at the level of the thyroid gland, so sure that the target organ is going to be the thyroid gland. By this way, you can study it. So pituitary gland is located at the base of the brain below the hypothalamus. So this uh, gland secretes two hormones. The first one is called thyroid stimulating hormone, and the second one is called human growth hormone. So thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, T thyroid S stimulating H hormone. So this gland stimulates the thyroid gland, as it indicates, thyroid stimulating hormone. So stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete the hormone thyroxine. This gland or this hormone that works on the target organ, which is the thyroid gland. Second hormone is called the human growth hormone. H for human, G for growth, and H for hormone. So human growth hormone. Human growth hormone it stimulates the growth and the development, as its name indicates, human growth hormone. Stimulate the growth and development, the building of muscles, for example, and increasing the size of the muscles and so on. So it works throughout the whole body. So this is the first gland, the pituitary gland. So here the pituitary gland is located at the base of the brain, below the hypothalamus. Moving now to the second gland. Second type of gland is called the thyroid gland, where it's located, located at the level of the neck. This is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland secretes a hormone thyroxine. It forms T3 and T4. As I said, the function of the thyroid gland by the secretion of the hormone thyroxine, it influences or it affects the metabolic reaction, the metabolism inside our body, and it works throughout the whole body. So it doesn't have a specific target organ. Otherwise, it works throughout the whole body. Moving now to the third type of gland. This is the thyroid gland, as I said, located at the level of the neck. Moving to the third gland, it's called the pancreas. Pancreas is located in the abdomen region, it's under the stomach. It secretes two hormones. The first hormone is called the insulin, and the second hormone is called the glucagon. So insulin hormone. What is the function of the insulin? Insulin hormone, it decreases the level of glucose in the blood. So it decreases the level of sugar. 
For example, if we eat a lot of sugar or food containing sugar in a high amount, the level of glucose will increase above the normal level. So the pancreas will have an alert, it have a signal. So we have to regulate the level of glucose inside our body. We have to decrease the high level. So they secrete insulin. So the high level will go back to the normal and will be the normal level of glucose. This is because of the insulin. So some types of diabetes due to the malfunctioning or abnormality in the secretion of insulin or insulin is not functioning properly. So this is some types of diabetes. So insulin, it decreases the level of glucose in the blood. So if we high high level, the pancreas will secrete the insulin to decrease the level of glucose. The target organ they are the liver cell, the muscles, and the adipocytes, the lipid cells. So these are the tar main target organs for the insulin. So the first hormone, as I said, is the insulin. Second hormone. Second hormone is called the glucagon. Glucagon is the opposite. We have low level of glucose, meaning it works through fasting, for example, during fasting. So the level of glucose will decrease. So we have stored glucose in other forms. So these will lead to the secretion of the glucagon. So glucagon will increase the level of glucose in the blood. So this is the function of glucose, the opposite of the insulin. So glucagon, it works to increase the glucose level inside the body and inside the blood, and it works on many body organs. So this is the third type of gland. So first one, it was the pituitary gland. The second type of the gland or the second gland, it was the uh, thyroid gland. And the third gland, it was the pancreas. So pancreas, as I said, is located here, the optimal region below the stomach. And it has secreted two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Insulin it increases the level or it decreases, sure, it decreases the level of glucose, whereas glucagon it increases the level. Moving now to adrenal gland. Adrenal gland, they are found on the top of the kidneys. So on the top of the kidneys, we have adrenal glands. What did they secrete? They secrete the hormone adrenaline. Adrenaline, it is responsible for the secretion for the regulation sorry of the iron concentration inside the body and in the regulation or the control of the stress level okay so this will work throughout the whole body so this is the function of the adrenal gland so the adrenal gland they are found on the top of the kidneys they secrete the hormone adrenaline adrenaline it regulates the iron concentration and the stress level and it works throughout the whole body. So till now we have the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, we have the pancreas, and here we have the adrenal glands. All of them they are found in both males and females. So there are no sexual glands till now. Okay? So here we have the adrenal glands, they are found on the top of the kidneys, the right adrenal gland and the left adrenal gland on the right and the left kidneys as you know since we have two kidneys now we move to the testicles so testicles is the gland that is special and unique for males for sure so this gland is found in the pelvic region but not to the inside to the outside of the pelvic region this is called the testicles testicles they secrete one of the most widely known hormone testosterone so it's called testosterone Testosterone is the male sexual hormone. The function of this hormone is to regulate and to control the secondary sexual characteristics. And it works throughout the whole body. So the functioning of this hormone, testosterone, it regulates the secondary sexual characteristics in the male and it works throughout the whole body. A abnormality in this secretion will lead to the problems in the sexual characteristics for the male. So this is the gland that is special for males, which is the testicles. So testicles, as I said, is found in the pelvic region. They are called 
uh, they are found to the outside. Why? Because they are suspended in a sac-like structure, which is called the scrotum. So these are the two testicles. This is the first one, and this is the second one. And they are found or suspended inside a sac. This sac is referred to as the scrotum. It's found here. So this is the scrotum. It's like a sac that carries the testicles in the pelvic region, but not to the inside of the body. It's going to outside. It's suspended outside the pelvic region. Moving now to the last gland, which is the ovaries. Ovaries, it's special for females. So this gland is special for females. Also, it's found in the pelvic region, but not to the outside. It's found in the pelvic region. It's embedded inside the pelvic region. It secretes one of the hormones, estrogen. Next year, in grade 12, we're going to talk about other hormone, which is called progesterone. So we're going to talk about estrogen this year. So we have another hormone, it's called progesterone. But here, let's talk only about the estrogen. Estrogen, if you hear about another name, it's called the uh, natural one, it's called estrogen. The artificial is called estradiol. Can be written like this. So if you read sometimes, uh, estradiol is the same as estrogen. Okay, so both of them, they are the same chemical structure and chemical formation and the chemical formula. Both of them, estrogen or estradiol, they are the same. These estrogen or the estradiol, it has an important role to control the secondary sexual characteristics and it works throughout the whole body. So, as I said, we have two special glands for males and females. So, problems in the ovaries may lead to, pro to the sterility as well as problem in the testicles may lead to sterility. Sterility is the problem where the male or female, they can give birth to children, okay? The opposite of fertility is sterility, okay? So here, the problem or any dysfunctioning or abnormality at the level of the ovaries will lead to the problem that's called sterility, okay? This problem called sterility. Like, for example, if you remember in the karyotype, whenever we have problem in the sexual, for a sexual chromosome or the gonosomes, this will lead to the sterility. So the problem of the gonosome will affect, for example, the ovaries or affect the function of the ovaries will lead to sterility as well as for the males. So the problems in the testicles may affect the fertility of the man. So you have to be careful about this. And the problem in the testicles or any problem in the ovaries may affect the fertility of both the male and females. So these problems may affect the fertility while and the other gland in the thyroid gland and the, for example, pituitary gland and the pancreas, the adrenal gland, this function, this problems or abnormality in these glands won't uh, affect the fertility of the person unless it, has, it makes another problem to affect the sexual gland like the testicles in males or the ovaries in females. So here you have to be careful about this, that the uh, problems in the glands and this gland, the sexual gland, as, uh, the ovaries and the testicles may affect the fertility. For example, we have in the karyotype, if you remember in grade nine, we have gland filter syndrome, we have turning syndrome, uh, we have abnormalities at the level of the gonosomes, at the level of the sexual chromosome, this will affect the fertility as well. So this is everything related to the glands, and this is the ovaries. They are found here. They are the ovaries here, one and two. Maybe some problems will lead to the atrophy of the ovaries, meaning that they become smaller in size and non-functional school atrophy. So here, the uh, word also we can say, for example, I can give you a question, and I said ablation of the ovaries. What the meaning of ablation? Ablation of the ovaries meaning that the removal of the ovaries. So I remove the ovaries. This is the word ablation. So I've said ablation. It moves. It means that the removal. So the removal of the ovaries will cause a functioning. Uh, it will cause the problems and the secretion of the hormone, estrogen, and so on. Sometimes we're going to ask you how do the uh, the hormones they act. For example, if you have a gland that's located at the level of the neck, and then I place this gland, this gland at the level of the stomach and it's still functioning normally. What can you deduce from this? 
we can deduce that this gland it works through the blood by the secretion of specific substances, for example. Okay, so you have to be familiar with this. You have to know that the endocrine gland they secrete chemical substances which are hormone and the level of the blood. Okay, here we have the uterus, which is the site of implantation of the uh, embryo, and also we have here the uh, vagina, which is the male, uh, which is the female sexual organ, and we have fallopian tube, which are called the uterine tube. We're going to talk about them later on in grade 12 to 12. So this is everything related to the revision for the endocrine system. So this endocrine system is almost done for this week. Thank you.